Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another tutorial on Action Studios and first of all, I know it's been a while, it's been a long long while, like 7 or 8 months, but I'm back and today with an amazing tutorial showing you how to create this amazing fire effect, like cartoonish look and I actually can't wait to show you this because I've had enough of all these motion designers using flash FX pack cartoon elements whatever from video hive and you know all that stuff um, and yeah quick disclaimer I'm going to use trap code particular for this uh, effect and now I'd say let's get right into it so first of all of course as always create a new composition press and control n uh, click OK whatever and now I'm going to make a new solid by pressing ctrl Z and um, yeah that's okay it doesn't matter really and uh, now we're going to create uh, the particular layer so let's go to trap code particular and uh, yeah particular had a big update but I haven't gotten my hands on it so don't worry I'm not using this today. So the first thing I want to get into is the particle drop down menu. So the color we want is some darker orange here because we want first of all we want to create the base for the fire um, which as you can see here is uh, dark orange and um, I'm going to make this a lot bigger those small small little particles so let's change the size here to 70 okay nice and um the life yeah maybe set this to one second or even a little bit shorter point, let's change it to 0.8 and um even add some more randomness to it like 30 percent and uh, the whole animation for the fire will come from the size over life here where you can actually just draw a curve of it going down over time okay um, yeah that's good and just smoothen it out by clicking smooth a couple of times and um, uh, as you can see there's some kind of feather effect going on here I don't want this so I'm just going to set the feather to zero nice and um, okay great now we have the particle and the next thing we want to edit is the emitter drop down menu because first of all we want some more particles per second I'm just going to change this to 150 maybe change it afterwards let's see and the emitter type I don't want it to be a point I want it to be kind of a like a small area so I'm going to change this to box and this is definitely too big so I can change the size of it down here at emitter size and uh, change it to 30 um, and now for these velocity values just yeah throw them all to zero um, and here let's see what we got we got nothing okay that's perfect and now we can test this whole thing out by animating the position of our um, emitter of our box by clicking this little stopwatch here and going further on the timeline by like one second and change the position okay and now if we play back this nice we can already see where we're getting it so as this test passed we can duplicate this layer and create the inside the the, the uh, how do I call it um, the glowing part of the whole fire which is going to be a brighter yellow so let's go down to particle again and change the color to a bright bright yellow okay this should be good and then change the size down to 35 okay um, the rest should stay the same except for uh, 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 yeah I don't want it to be exactly the same shape as my um, base fire so 
I'm going to change the emitter size by selecting the individual option here and just changing it to some a little bit random values here uh, 25, 35, 45 okay now it's it has a little bit more of a of an oval oval shape um, which gives it even more um, yeah realistic effects if I may call it like that and now the last part we want is um, the sparks which will give it the whole which will give it a more of a real fire effect so in order to achieve that effect we are going to duplicate our black solid once more and now we're going to change a lot of settings so let's first of all expand emitter and we don't want that many particles per second so let's change this down to around 40 seems good and sorry and uh, now we don't want the particles to stay at the very center here we want them to burst out so we're going to add some velocity um, let's add around 300 here and see how this looks okay and now what we want is the particles to kind of slow down as they burst out into the outside um, so let's go down to physics and add some air resistance uh, let's see maybe around two okay cool and don't worry these particles will burst out even more once I add more lifetime to them so let's go down to particle and change the life to two seconds let's see okay and now as you can see these are very big so let's change the size down to six okay or yeah 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 six is good and now let's add some randomness to it around 30 percent should be perfect okay mm -hmm. so let's make them even a little bigger okay okay seems perfect and now last thing is the color I want it to be something in between these two main colors so I'm going to choose um, yeah, um, you know light orange here and now the thing that's important is to drag this thing below all these other solids otherwise we could see these freckles in here in our right um, center okay let's preview this nice and now comes the fun part we are going to animate this whole thing so we are going to create a new null object by holding down option control shift and z okay there we go and now we're going to make our um, position of the box emitter um, dependent on our null object so in order to do that let's hold option and click this little stopwatch at position here and as you can see this creates a new expression so click on the null object again and press P to reveal position and then you can just take this pick whip and drag it onto the null position perfect there we go and uh, now you can right click this position here click copy expression only and then select these other two solids type in position up here and uh, click on this position hold down control and click on this one and then just control V to paste the whole thing so now what should happen is everything should move once I move this which is perfect and uh, now if I animate this let's make a, a keyframe here and go down by two seconds if I animate this nice we can already see where we're going with this perfect so as you can see here in this preview I showed you before the um, fire source is coming towards the camera at the end so 
in order to create this illusion, we are going to make an expression for the particle size too. So first of all, let's pull up our scale property here and uh, click on this solid and go down to particle size here. Option click again. And now this is going to be a bit more complicated and then take the pip wick, well, whip tick pick what? Take the pick whip once again and go up to the scale property here and release it over one of those two dimension uh, scales here. Okay, and now as you can see, it's going to be very big. So we're going to divide this value here by 100. So, um, okay, let's just type this here at the end by 100. Nice. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to set 35 times 100 by 100. So if I change this up to 200, it should be twice as big. Nice. Um, and I'm going to copy this expression again and take these other two solids once again, type in what the fuck size here and select this size, select this size and just paste. Now, as we can see, everything is going to scale up once I change this value here. Okay, and now comes the part what you're here for, the animating process. So let's delete the keyframes we already have here and create a new one in the beginning. Um, I'm going to change this to the center and uh, I'll go down by one second and just make some kind of swirl by manipulating these little red dots which are called Bezier handles and do it for this point too. Okay, and then go down by one second again or maybe maybe a bit more and um, then once it's here you can see there's no Bezier handle here so you can just click G on your keyboard and then you can drag one out. Nice. Do the same for here. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to change the interpolation here a little bit because now it would look uh, a bit dull. Okay. I'm going to select all of these keyframes, click F9, go to the graph editor, be sure to select the speed graph and uh, then I'm going to drag the first one all the way out, influence 100%. So it's going to be slow in the beginning and then speed up and st still be sped up, sped up and in the end, yeah, it should still be sped up. So I'm going to make this space here a bit smaller. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Make this even faster. Okay. Like so. Nice. And uh, then after I've done this, I'm going to change the scale property. So let's make a new keyframe. Um, so let's make a new keyframe on scale and change this to maybe 50% here. And in the end, it should be at, oh, I can go to 400. Okay. Press U again to reveal all the keyframes, line them up and press F9 again and I want it to slowly scale up in the beginning and then really come towards the camera in the end. Oop. Okay, like so. Nice. And now you can choose to add a few effects on there to make it more, more interesting, um, as you can see in this one. So, uh, in order to, to do this, I'm going to make a new adjustment layer by pressing Option, Control, Z and uh, then I'm going to go to Effects and Presets, type in Glow and just double click, Stylize Glow 
and uh, play a little with these values here um, add more uh, and a little more intensity okay nice you can see this really improves the whole fire ambience um, and I think I'm actually going to change our color of our backdrop of the fire to a little darker red like this uh, mm -hmm. and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to lower our lifetime of the yellow fire part so where is particle there we go life and I'm just going to set this down to 0.7 or maybe even 0.6 okay yep nice and now you can add even more heat and uh, you know interesting stuff to it by going to our adjustment layer again and typing in directional blur here double click and um, just you know I can I can animate the blur Blur length here. You can see what this does. It, it makes it, yeah, you know, gives uh, gives it a little heat distorted effect. So I'm going to animate this as it goes goes towards the camera. So let's go to the beginning here. Change it to maybe three, and in the end, it should be really high yet. Mm, nice, fifteen, perfect. And I have this really handy tool, which is called Ease Copy, which you can get for free on AE Scripts, um, or donate a little bit for the developer. And you can select keyframes, copy your ease, and paste it on keyframes uh, without ease. And now you can see we have a great fire effect here. Yeah, I really hope this tutorial helped you and maybe inspired some of you to experiment by themselves and try out some fiery animation stuff and yeah please be sure to subscribe leave a like maybe i'm going to drop the project um, link in the description and yeah maybe i'm going to make a smoke tutorial sometime in the future so you have the smoke to the fire yeah see you guys ciao